Okay, um, I wanted to do a, uh, a little music theory lesson on chords and uh, just sort of how they work. Specifically, chord names and, and how to know uh, what you're looking at whenever you see a different chord written out, um, how to know exactly what that means and how to sort of put those notes together and how to play it. Um, the, the approach that a lot of people take to learning chords is um, they'll sort of see something, um, you know, say like that, and uh, they'll just kind of memorize that chord, sort of just one at a time, going, okay, when I see that, I need to play, you know, those three notes. Or, um, you know, if you saw something like that, you'll learn that, okay, that means that I play that right there. Um, and that's fine, that, that works for a while, but um, it turns out to be pretty limiting, especially when you get farther along uh, musically, when you start to learn a lot more chords and different keys, or you start to get into more advanced chords, it just turns into so many different things to try to remember. Um, and uh, if you were to see a chord, uh, say, say something like that, um, odds are you're not going to know what that means. There's just so many different advanced chords and things to try to memorize that, it just gets to be overwhelming. Um, but if you know how this system works, if you know what these names mean and how they work, then um, this is simple. There's really nothing to that chord. You'll know exactly what to do there really right away. So that's what I want to kind of break down. And um, there's actually a, a bigger reason to learn how the chords work, and that's just sort of understanding music in general. Um, if you want to learn music theory and just kind of how it all works, this is a great way to get into it. Um, learning how these chords fit and how they interact, that's going to let you... Uh, just sort of improvise and compose and just sort of lets you understand how this music fits and it's just a really really wonderful thing to, to get a hold of. Um, so we'll get started and we'll start with uh, a real simple one. I think we'll just start with this one right here um, and kind of uh, kind of work our way up from there. So let's take that chord and I want to show you how this is going to work. Um, anytime you see a chord, doesn't matter uh, how advanced it is, there's always just two parts to it. There's, uh, there's this first part right here, and this is what's called uh, the, the root of the chord. And the root is just one single note. It's the note that everything kind of starts on, and it's the note you're going to kind of measure everything else against. You're going to use that note to find the other stuff in the chord. So to, to find the root of the chord, you just kind of find the note, and there you go. There's really nothing to that. Um, but it's this next part here, this, uh, they call this the chord quality. Um, this is where things get a little more involved. This is what I want to, want to kind of break down. So what this does, this tells you what the other notes in the chord are going to be. But it doesn't actually tell you what they are directly. Um, it just tells you how far away they are from your root note. So to find these notes, you have to know how to measure distance in music. And, and the way you measure distance is you use something called an interval. Um, now intervals are just how far apart two notes are. They're, they've turned out to be pretty simple. So let me show you a few of those and we'll kind of get going that way. So the first interval you want to know is a uh, what's called a half step. Half step is just two notes that are right next to each other. So for instance like C and C sharp. Those are right next to each other. There's a half step. Um, see F sharp to G. That's a half step. Any one of those two notes that are right next to each other, those are a half step apart. Now the, the one spot where it's a little bit weird is right here, E to F. Um, these two notes are also a half step. They are right next to each other. There's nothing in between, so they're a half step. But if you're kind of just looking at the white notes, that can look kind of strange. You know, these two are a half step apart, but these two are not. There's something in between those. So just make sure that in that little area there, you kind of know how that works. But other than that, half step, real simple, and then you can find those anywhere. So once you have that, um, that's kind of one of the basic building blocks. There's another one you need, and that's what's called a whole step. Um, whole step is kind of just what you'd think. It's uh, just two half steps. So if you start on a note, and you want to go up a whole step, you go up a half step, you go up another half step, and then you have your, your whole step. Now, when you're looking for these, um, you don't really want to have to count up. You don't want to be thinking, you know, half step, half step every time. You want to just see these right away. So what you're kind of looking for here is you just look for this little shape where you have two notes with one note in between. Just kind of see that and then this gets to be real easy. Um, you know, so right here, here's another whole step. Here's your, your one note in between. Um, there, there, one of those places you just have a, have a whole step. Now the one weird spot is going to be like right in here or right in here where you, know, you get this. Now this is a whole step. Here's your one note in between, but it looks a little strange at first, so just make sure that you're comfortable with uh, just kind of how a whole step works in that area. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. Those two are what we're going to use to kind of um, find any other intervals, any of these bigger ones. 
So as long as you're comfortable with that, then figuring out this chord should be pretty simple. So let's actually get into what this means. Um, this right here, this is this name and uh, this chord quality. It's going to tell you what these other notes are. Now this is what's called a simple chord. It's just a, it's a triad. It means it just has three notes in it. And the first note we've already got is that F. So this is just telling you where these other two notes are. Um, now the, the first one, we're going to start on our F. We already have that one figured out. Um, but the first note we need is going to be up above F somewhere, and it's going to be a major third higher. Um, and that's kind of what this name is coming from. This major here is saying your next note up needs to be a major third higher. Now a major third is just an interval in the same way that, uh, that a whole step or a half step is an interval. Um, now this interval is two whole steps. That's what a major third is. It's like the definition of a major third. So if you want to go up a major third, say we're starting on our F, right? um, you're going to go over a whole step. That'll put you right here. Here's that one note in between. And you go up another whole step, which will put you right there. You know, there's that one note in between. And there you go. There's your major third. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what instrument you're on or, or where you start, whatever note, it's always going to be the same thing. Um, a major third is two whole steps in the same sense that a foot is 12 inches. So we could start anywhere else. We could start on uh, start in an A, and we go up a whole step, another whole step, and I'll put you right there, and there's a major third. Um, you could start, say, on this A flat, go up a whole step, another one, there's a major third. Really easy. Now, same with the with the whole step. You don't really want to have to count your way through this. This is I'm showing you this to start with, but you want to get good at just kind of seeing those, just kind of looking for that pattern, kind of seeing those those two whole steps right away. So it'd be great to just kind of spend a little while just sort of trying to find these real quickly, just sort of starting on random notes, and, and spend a little while in these little areas. This is where things tend to look a little bit strange just because of that little funny business around these notes. So you know, there's your major third, there's a major third, and sort of just kind of get used to that. But after a little while, it's pretty easy. So. There's our major third. We started on F, that was our root note, and then this told us that we need to go up a major third to get to our next note, and that's two out of three notes already. Now there's one more note in this chord, um, and that note is going to be um, up a little higher. It's going to be up here somewhere. I don't know what it is yet, so we'll just leave it like that. And uh, it's going to be what's called a perfect fifth higher than F. Um, now a perfect fifth is just another interval in the same sense that a major third is an interval. Um, it's a bigger one. This one is going to be uh, three whole steps and a half steps. And I'll show you how to kind of find that in a second. But first you may be thinking, okay, I understand how this would be telling you that you need to do a major third. That sort of makes sense. But there's nothing in this chord name that really says anything about a perfect fifth. So you think, okay, how do I know that I'm supposed to do a perfect fifth? And the way this works, um, just about every chord you do is going to have a fifth in it. Um, they almost always have a perfect fifth. Um, and so it would be kind of nice if this chord was called, you know, F major third perfect fifth. That would be like, okay, that tells you exactly what you need to do over here. But almost every chord has this, and so you usually just leave this off. Most chords just kind of tell you this part, and they don't really tell you anything about the fifth. And whenever that happens, you just assume that you need to have a perfect fifth in the chord. Um, now, there are times when your fifth is going to be different. You can do some, like an altered fifth, call it like a diminished fifth or an augmented fifth or something like that. But if that ever happens, the chord is going to tell you that. It will specifically say diminished or augmented or something like that to, to change this fifth. If it doesn't say anything about it, you just assume that you have a perfect fifth. And you kind of get used to that pretty quickly. So anyway, we have our third, we figured that out. Now we need to find this perfect fifth. And like I said, it's just three whole steps and a half step. So if we start from, start from this F again, we start counting over. Um, here's a whole step, there's one. Go another whole step, there's two. Another whole step, there's three. And this last little half step that takes us right there and that gives us our fifth. Now, same as the third, um, you don't really wanna have to count through this. You will at first to kind of get used to where this is, but you wanna just be able to see this right away. But this is kind of a bigger interval and it, it can be kind of hard to, uh, to count all the way up with something like this. So there's a, a real simple pattern you can kind of look for on a piano that makes this really easy to find. If you start on a white note and you sort of skip over three white notes and you wind up right here, that should give you a perfect fifth. Right here, go to right there, I have those three white notes in between, there's your perfect fifth. Same thing there. 
Um, so really, anywhere you start, you should just be having those three notes right in between, and that makes that really easy to find. If you were to start on a black note, like here, you want to have exactly two black notes in between, so you should be seeing that. And that can be really easy to find too. Just look for this, two in between, and you've got your perfect fifth. So that works great. The only time that doesn't actually work is when you start on the note B or B flat. If you start on B and you try to do that little pattern, you kind of skip over these three, you wind up right here. And if you look at it, this actually isn't quite far enough. If you start from here, you go up a whole step, go up another whole step, and another whole step, you wind up with three whole steps between here and here. And that's not quite enough. You actually need three whole steps and a half step to make a perfect fifth. So you need to go all the way up to there. And the reason for that is just because there, there's these two spots where there's no black note, and that means that these notes are kind of squished closer together than they would be if you were, say, over here. There's actually more notes in between these two. So that's the, the one spot where it's going to be weird. You have to kind of just watch out for that. So B, go all the way up to here. There's your perfect fifth. And then for B flat, if you tried to go to this black note to put these two in between, um, you have kind of the same problem. This is actually going to be too wide. Um, you've got all these extra notes kind of crammed in here. So you need to do this, and that will give you your perfect fifth. So most cases, it's really easy to find, but just watch out for B. If you start on B, you got to kind of remember that you need to be doing that. Or if you start on B flat, you're going to go to right there. So as long as you're used to that, these 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 fifths get really easy. Um, so. Anywhere you start from, like say for our chord here, you know, first thing you find is your major third. Then for that fifth, just here to there, you should be able to see those three notes in between, and then you've pretty much got it. So that's our major chord, um, and, and this is going to work for any, any root note, and you can put any kind of note in here. This is not going to change. This is like the definition of what a major chord is, so this is not able to change. So it's, let's say we started on C sharp. Um, we would start right here, here's our new root note, but we're going to go up a major third, so that'll take you from there to right there, and then you're going to have your perfect fifth, so from here to right there. You can kind of see, here's these two, with those two black notes in between, that gives you C sharp major right there. We could start on, uh, I don't know, G, here's our major third, and then our perfect fifth. There you go. So anywhere you, you want to start from, this is not going to change. Okay, so there's a major chord, and that's probably the most common chord you're going to see. Now, quick little note, a lot of times, um, since this is such a common chord, a lot of times you'll see it written just like that. Um, it's just a single note. And what's happening here is just kind of the, the chord quality is just being left off completely. Figure that a major chord is kind of your default chord. If, if you just see a chord like F or D sharp, assume that it's a major chord. It's such a common thing that this sort of gets left off. The next one we're gonna do is a, a minor chord. And if, if a chord's gonna be a minor chord, it has to say minor. You can't just put an F and, and imagine that it's a minor chord. This would mean major chord. That's kind of your, your default. But let's go ahead and do the minor chord. Um, once we have the major chord, the minor chord is really easy. Um, so let's say we actually wanted to do this this time. All right, so for a minor chord, um, for now we have the same root notes. So we're gonna start on F again but our quality is different. Um, this is telling you that now you need a minor third. That's why this says minor. You're gonna be doing a minor third here. Now, a minor third is just another interval. Um, and th there's actually a lot of intervals that sort of have these two versions. You have sort of a major version and a minor version. Um, for a third, major third, minor third, there's also an interval of a second. There's a major second and a minor second. Um, there's also a sixth. You'll have a major sixth and a minor sixth and a seventh of a major seventh and a minor seventh. And, and understanding a minor is real easy. Um, it's always just a half step lower than the major interval. So if our major third was uh, two whole steps, then our minor third is just gonna be a whole step and a half step, just one half step back. So if you're, if you're pretty familiar with this major third by now, then finding those minors should be really easy. Um, let me go ahead and change that. And uh, that gives us our minor third. That's all you really need. Um, now, up here, there, there's nothing about the fifth here, again, and so you're just going to assume that you still need a perfect fifth. So this isn't going to change. If we start on F, you know, now we have our minor third, so that's a, a whole step and a half step. Remember, just a half step lower than a major third. That's going to put you right here. And then the perfect fifth isn't going to change. There to there is still a perfect fifth, so that's going to be the same thing. So that right there is your F minor chord. Now, same deal that's going to work on any root note you want to start from. So let's say we were doing E flat. Um, 
Start on E flat, go up a, a minor third. Remember, be careful in this little area, things look strange, but there's your whole step and a half step. And then for your fifth, same deal, here to here, here's those two black notes in between, and there you have your uh, E flat minor. Okay, so those two chords, the, uh, the major and the minor, those are by far the most common. You're going to see lots and lots of those. Um, and even the more advanced chords are usually built kind of on top of those. We'll be sort of adding extra notes on top. But you want to be very familiar with the majors and the minors. Just sort of spend a little while just kind of picking a random note to start on and just kind of finding the rest of the chord. Try to see it as quickly as you can. Just get used to how this whole shape works. And if you're pretty good with your intervals, you know, being able to see a major third, minor third, then this should be pretty simple. Um, now there, there's two other uh, three note chords that I want to show you. Um, and these are these are a little less common, but they do still happen, and uh, they're, they're still good chords, so I want to show you those. Um, so we're going to start with uh, what's called a diminished chord. And we'll pick a different root note this time. Um, let's say we'll start on A. All right, so we're going to do what's called an A diminished. Now, sometimes you'll see diminished written like this. Um, sometimes you'll see this little circle thing. Um, that means the same thing. That's an A diminished. Um, for now, I'm just going to leave it as, uh, as this. It's a bit a little easier to, to remember. But A diminished. Now, same thing as before. You have a root note, and then you have a chord quality. So to find the root note, it's simple. Just look for an A, and there's our A. Now, this name here, this chord quality, this is actually referring to the fifth this time. I told you that the fifth wouldn't change much, but it does for this chord. Um, so over here, we, we're still starting on A. That's our root note. And uh, we're still going to have a third. We're going to have you know, some note here that we're going to go up to with a third. But we don't actually know what kind of third that's going to be yet. It might be a major third or a minor third. I'll show you that in a second. But this interval, um, going all the way up to, uh, to this note up here, this, is what ne this needs to be what's called a diminished fifth. And right there. Now, diminished fifth, real simple. This is just a, uh, it's just like a perfect fifth, but it's a half step lower. Um, sort of the same way that like a minor third is a half step lower than a major third. So if we're starting on our note A right here, um, to get a perfect fifth we go from here right to there. But that's not what we need this time, we need our diminished fifth, so we're just going to lower it by a half step and put it right there. Now you might think, okay, why not just call it a major fifth and a minor fifth? That seems like it's doing the same thing as a third. And that kind of has to do with just how the music is set up and how these things work, but um, kind of think of it this way, the, the fifth is not going to change very often. This is a little bit of an unusual chord. You're going to see it, but not that much. Um, so the, the fifth is almost always going to be this. It's, a, it's what's called a perfect interval. It's usually that right there. Um, but the other ones, like the, the third, you're going to have major thirds and minor thirds all the time. Those are constantly being kind of shifted around. So think of that as something that's going to change a lot. This doesn't change much, so you, you just kind of think of it as it has this one version, this perfect fifth. And uh, every now and then you get these sort of altered fits, but they're a little bit less usual. So anyway, this diminished thing, that's referring to this. Your fifth becomes a little bit lower. So, so far we have that. A, here's our perfect fifth. Lower it a little bit, and they you have your diminished fifth. Now, this chord name, this chord quality, doesn't tell you anything about this third. So you don't actually know what kind of third you need here. So you could think, okay, this could be a major third or it could be a minor third. But when you start looking at it, um, it actually turns out that it can only be a minor third. I'll show you why. Um, let's say that we tried to put in a major third, thinking, okay, maybe this should be a major third and we have our diminished fifth. So you start on A, you go up your major third, and there's a whole step, whole step. So it puts you right there. And then we still have our diminished fifth, which was right here. Now, this doesn't actually work as a chord. And there's, there's this sort of rule about the way chords have to work. Um, any two notes, when you line a chord up like this, um, any two notes can, at the most, be a major third apart, and at the least, be a minor third apart. So, like from here to there, that note to that note, that's a major third, and that works fine. Um, it's no bigger or smaller than, than major third or minor third, so that, that fits perfect. But from here to there, these two notes, they're only a whole step apart. That's even smaller than a minor third, and that kind of breaks that rule. That means that this can't really work as a chord. Um, so when you see that, you got to think, okay, this doesn't work. It doesn't fit that rule. So I can't be using a minor third here. That would put these two notes too close together. So the only kind of third you can use is that minor third. And when you do that, everything works fine. 
You start on A and you go to here, there's your minor third, and then if you compare this note to that note, that's also just a minor third, and both of those work just fine. So just remember that rule when you're kind of figuring out chords. They have, any two notes have to be either a major third apart or a minor third, they can't be anything else. So when you see this, you think, okay, that can't work, it has to be this. And that's why there's, there's nothing about the third in this chord name, is because it can only be one thing, it can only be a minor third. You write that in just so you can see it. Um, and that's how, that's how diminished chord works. So, and same thing as before, you can start at any root note you want. Like let's say you start on a, an F, open major third, and then your diminished fifth. Over here's your perfect fifth, and there's your diminished fifth right there. Now, one thing that could maybe make these a little easier to find is um, if you think about how this lines up, there's a, there's a minor third between here and there. Just measuring that distance, that's a minor third. But when you're doing this diminished chord, you have your minor third and your diminished fifth. There's also a minor third between here and there. If you measure the distance between these two notes, it's also a minor third. And so when you're putting together this chord, instead of looking for your fifth and making it a diminished fifth, you can just kind of compare this note to that middle note and think, okay, this needs to be a minor third. That's just how this is going to work out. So that can sometimes be easier to see. Either way, it's the same thing, but it kind of helps to sort of be able to see that from both directions. So, like I said, any root you want to start on, say C, put you right there. Um, there's an A flat diminished. All they all work the same way. Same formula, no matter what you're doing. And uh, and that's a diminished chord. Um, pretty basic once you get sort of how this works. There's there's one more I, I want to show you out of the um, kind of these simple three note chords. And uh, this is what's called an augmented chord. And this chord is pretty unusual. You're really not going to see very many of these. Um, the major and minor are by far the most common. You're going to see some diminished chords. They, they pop up from time to time. Um, but the augmented chord doesn't happen a whole lot. So let's start on, say, a G this time. Um, this, uh, a lot of times, gets written like this, like just a plus. And uh, other times, you'll actually see uh, the words kind of abbreviated A-U-G. I want to just go ahead and leave it at that for now. Um, so when you do an augmented chord, it works um, a little bit like the diminished. Um, this this quality here is referring to that fifth again. So here's our root note, um, starting on G. Um, we're going to have this third. Still not sure which kind it is yet, but we know that our fifth, going all the way up to whatever that note is, needs to be what's called an augmented fifth. Now an augmented fifth is um, it's just a perfect fifth that is raised by a half step this time. So if you if you start on G and you look for your perfect fifth, which would put you right here. You just have to raise that by a half step, put you right there, and there's your augmented fifth. Easy as that. Um, if, you, if you get confused between these two, just remember that the word diminished means like to make smaller, kind of think of it as being squished. So when you diminish a fifth, you're sort of squeezing it together, you're gonna lower that. When you augment something, you make it bigger, you're sort of expanding it. So it's gonna sort of push you outwards and you're gonna get to a bigger interval. Just try to keep those straight and you should be fine. Now, same as before, this doesn't tell you anything about the third, but if you look at the way this chord works, it turns out there's only one kind of third you can use. Um, if you're trying to use a minor third, so you want to try that first, you start on G, you go up your minor third, put you right here, um, you have kind of the same problem. If you look at these two notes, they work fine, but if you compare this note to that note, they're too far apart. This is, this is bigger than a major third. A major third from here would put you right here. There's a whole step, there's a whole step, right there. And this is too far away, it's bigger than that. So this can't really work as a chord. So that means that putting a minor third into an augmented chord is not gonna work. The only one that's going to work is that major third. So you go from here, go to right there, there's your major third. And then from here to there, to our uh, augmented fifth, that's also a major third. Think from there to there's a whole step, there's a, there's a whole step, and that works fine. So same as before, this chord doesn't tell you anything about the third because it can only be one thing. It can only be that uh, that major third, and uh, that's that's how that chord's gonna work. Um, same thing as before, same same formula here. Anywhere you start, it's all gonna wind up the same way. Start on a D, major third, and then you have your your augmented fifth. Um, and then same as the other chord too. If you if you want kind of a different way to look at this, um, you know you're, you find your major third. If you're looking for this augmented fifth, 
you know, you, when you think augmented fifth, you're measuring from this root note here, right, all the way up to here. But if you want to just measure it from this second note, it should just be a major third. You can think of it that way. Think, okay, if I need to do an augmented chord, I go up a major third, and then from here, I go up another major third. Or you can just think of it the other way and think, okay, major third from my root note, and then an augmented fifth from the root note. Either way is going to take you to the same place. So. That's, um, that's pretty much it for these, these three note chords. Um, all the other more advanced chords are going to be built right on top of these. And um, if you have a pretty solid understanding of how these work, then those more advanced chords, the four note chords or five note chords, there's really not a lot extra to that. Um, it's all just sort of real simple intervals that you're going to kind of put on top and sort of learn what these different names mean. Um, and I think I'm going to leave it at that for now. It's already pretty long, so I'm probably going to do um, some of these other chords in like a separate video. Um, so um, yeah, that's going to be it. If this helps you, um, if, if this worked for you, then uh, let me know. Leave me like a comment or, or uh, something like that. Uh, you could thumbs up the video or, um, or even subscribe. Um, if, if this works for people and this is helpful, then I'm probably going to make a lot more. Um, if not, then I'm probably just going to play more StarCraft 2. So um, let me know and I'll kind of decide what I want to do. But um, yeah, that's it for now. So I hope that helps you and um, I will see you next time. Thanks.